5 o'clock. Pleasure to welcome in Jamil Mohammed. We've been emailing back and forth for a while, but we finally met today and um, get to talk about some uh, collectibles and such. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm on the Larry Vitell show. There you go. That's that's not, Cross that off the bucket list. Boy, that's not the world. I bet I'm like number 97 on that 100-item bucket list, but I'll take it. I'm on a spot there. That's good. First of all, how do you get into what? What inspired you to decide oh, I can I can do a little business with this collectible stuff? Yeah, I mean, when I was young, you know, I'm a '80s '90s kid, so grew up in O'Fallon, Missouri, watching the Cardinals play out of Bush Stadium. Mm -hmm. Ozzy, Ray, you know, Lee Smith, and just the the idea of, of collecting and the idea of holding on to something as a kid was was cool. You know, it was something that I was able to do and and, and have keepsakes of my favorite players, and it just kind of grew from there, to be honest. Uh, Baseball cards are iconic, right? I mean, right? Everybody knows what they are. Everyone had them, and in the early 90s, there was a boom. And so everybody was doing it. Everybody collected something. Everybody had somebody's autograph. And so um, got into it, um, went to college, graduated from the wonderful University of Florida. And as I got out, I thought, hey, you know, I could do some more of this. I understand the market. I got into it. Started really getting on online, doing the mm -hmm. online front, which is really where the market is today. And i uh, just been blessed through that. So. Is it just is that just because maintaining a store and the expense and the overhead of maintaining a store has priced a lot of people out of uh, being able to be successful? Because we've had places locally, people that did great st work, but they, it just it's hard to make it go. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think the overhead. I mean, you look back in the '90s, even late '90s, you count how many car shops or collectible shops you used to see. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from I'm, my hometown is Brevard County, Rockledge, Florida. And uh, I, I look back and I think there was probably 15, 20 shops in that county, probably two there now. There's none here really in Gainesville, and um, it's, it's just the expense that it costs. And, and the draw really is when you have sites like eBay, Amazon, you have a lot of forum sites. You know, Beckett, which was a big player in the games now, has a huge online front. Um, there, it's, just, it's just impossible to kind of maintain that. Um, You've got to be really, really good at it to do it. So, so where are you? So I am, I am an online front. I am located online. Um, you can find me at a couple places. I'll give you guys my uh, store name. It's an odd name. It's called the Mealy Pop Shop. And I feel like I have to explain myself if I just say that. Um, when I was younger, I used to play soccer. My uncle was from England. Let's spell Mealy Pop. M-E-E-L-Y-P-O-P-S. Mealy Pop. Oh, P-O-P-S. Yeah. Dot com. Okay, mealypops dot com. All right. Yeah, well, it's not mealypops. I got the mealypop shop, and and uh, yeah, someone has. You'd be surprised, Larry. Somebody has the domain for mealypops dot com. But um, you could just search me on Google. Just type in the mealypop shop, or if you uh, go to Facebook, if you're a Facebook type, um, it's very easy to find me on there. Um, Facebook dot com slash the mealypop shop, and I have a huge eBay um, kind of storefront as well. So you can find me that way. Um, Stores dot eBay dot com slash the dash mealypops dot slash shop. So. I'm all over the place, and that's kind of how you have to do it, man, online. You have to be mm -hmm. everywhere. Do you go out and collect autographs yourself? Do you buy them from other collectors, both? Yeah, it's a funny question you ask, because my wife, uh, uh, we should be laughing. We just had a huge purchase just this weekend. We bought um, probably a storage unit and uh, uh, two bedrooms in, in a gentleman's house of his 30-year collection. He just he had, he couldn't do anything with it, and he wanted to open up a shop. And so kind of I've just gotten into the big frame pieces as well, some really cool, mm -hmm. interesting stuff from that, you know, and, um, you'd be interested. I, just, I was looking through it today, and there's a, a newspaper print article from 1834. It's the first published mention of baseball in that. And so, um, just really cool things that you know you can come across when you meet collectors. And that was that's one of the I do that all the time. Meet people who want to get rid of things. Okay. Our most question for today: What sports collectible or autograph do you wish you had? We're going to ask Jamil to choose the winner based on the responses. He's heard many of them during yeah. hour number one. And you'll get the gift card from Moe's Southwest Grill, plus three cards that he brought over here. And we've got others we're going to give away in, at other times. But um, it's a, a really uh, two cards that look like normal cards. They're covered up they're with the, you know, they're protected with plastic. Uh, the Jamar Gaffney and Andrew DeClerc. So this and is the Larry Vitell special, by the way, folks. He put this one, handpicked this together. Cool. All right. Yeah, I picked it out of a great, great group of options. But I get a little basketball football mix. It's Jabbar Gaffney and Andrew DeClerc, both autographed, both in their Gator uniforms and uh, protected in mint condition. The typical thin card you'll, you'll see. Now, the third thing you'll get is a card signed by Brandon Spikes. Again, his Gator uniform with a little Gator helmet embedded 
in a card that looks like it's about an eighth of an inch or yeah, thick, thick. three eighths of an inch. How would you describe? It? How yeah. did these cards come about? Yeah, these are. This is a product called uh, Upper Deck called Sweet Spot. Um, they they make uh, these. There's a whole variation of sports cards today. So anyone who collects knows. But um, they embed these small helmets inside the card. They take a card stock and they uh, mat them. They get the players to sign the helmets. Then they embed them and put the top on. And that's actually one. I think it's a short print and it's autographed by him. It's a really cool collectible. It's not just an autographed card. You get a little bit of a helmet in there. Um, some of my favorite cards, I think, those Gator um, helmet, mini helmets. Yeah, the in the little card. mini helmet um, and the signature, and it's encased in, in plastic, and then it's in wrapped up, wrapped all as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. once you get it, you might want to take this wrapping off, but it'll still be protected. So that's the prize package for our winner today. So that'll be cool. We appreciate you doing that. Of course. Uh, if you have questions about stuff that you've got, if it, does it have value, or what would it cost to get the thing you really want? Jamil is here to uh, talk about that through the remainder of the program at 392-8255. Our last email, Abib, what would like, I, I have no idea what the value of this would be, a signed discus from the first Olympiad. Yeah, I mean, I, that, <laughs> that right there, if you could if you could pull that off, would be uh, earth-shattering to the, uh, the sports collectible market now. Yeah, I, I, this I, is like a, finding out there, oh, Picasso painted an extra picture. Yeah, yeah. Signed discus. <laughs> What do you write on the discus? Sparta sucks. I mean, <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, and those, that would be a cool inscription to have. It probably drive the value up even more, right? <laughs> All right, three nine two eight two five five is our number. Woody, you're first. What's up? Yeah, hey guys, uh, hey. Jameer, appreciate you coming on the show. Um, Larry, my Moe's answer. Um, you know, I'm a Red Sox fan, died in the wool, but um, you remember the movie Sandlot and uh, James Earl Jones' scene where he busts out the baseball to replace the Babe Ruth ball. The baseball that he broke out was a signed ball by the 27 Yankees. And I know that most of the time, autograph stuff is more valuable if it's one name, one person. Mm -hmm. But I think that one might be an exception, and I, I would love to have that. I just, uh, you know, I mean, I can't help it. <laughs> I don't like current Yankees, but I like old Yankees. Let's put it that way. I think that would be awesome to have as that. As long ball. as they're dead, they're okay. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> the only good Yankee is a dead Yankee. There you go. A, 20, a 27 Yankee ball, I know they exist. Yeah, they do. That's that's a high-end item. You know, the Sandlot, you think about, was it the Beast? Was that the dog, I think, uh, yeah. that, that came in and tromped on it? Um, you know, you're right. If you can have an autograph single, singled out on a baseball, you're going to have a higher value driven on it. The problem is with a 1927 ball like that, you're going to have to authenticate every autograph, you know. And so right. um, you have all those autographs on it, and then you say to yourself, all right, you have to pay for certification fees. You know, someone's got to get paid to authenticated, but um, what some people will do, and I've seen this a lot, you, you might have someone like a Jackie Robinson, a Gehrig, a Mantle, and they'll just certify that autograph, you know, and they'll leave all the auto autographs on the baseball, and I know a lot of people have those in their closets, and they have them tucked away where they have a team signed ball, but it's almost impossible to authenticate that whole thing unless you want to put down a, a little fortune to, to, to get that actually authenticated, so that's a, that's a good piece, I, I like that one. Yeah, that's pretty cool, um, I, I, I don't know, I just... Uh... One of those things, you know. I, do you do you um, collect and do you place value on non-sports things? Yeah, sure. I mean, non-sports. There's, there's a huge uh, market for celebrities, and um, we've seen that a lot recently with uh, the card market. Is that there's a huge influx of non-sports celebrity pieces. Uh, I just remember an astronaut set that I just recently saw of autographs. I mean, just things like that where um, there is a market for that. People want that stuff. Um, you know, they're, they're definitely growing in that. Yeah. I mean, I'm an old movie buff, so like, what about a uh, Errol Flynn sword or you know something like that from an old movie? I don't know how you could, you know, authenticate it, but well, I can tell you, yeah, there's uh, there's things that you can, there's websites, for example, um, I'll give you a couple PSA um, slash DNA authentications. That website is psacard.com or um, James Spence authentication. I know he's come to Gainesville a few times. Spence L O A dot com, uh, where you can actually send items in like that. Beckett will do that as well. And they can try and authenticate those items, um, and then also, if there's an autograph on there, authenticate that as well. All right, so we're, we're, we're doing Antique Roadshow meets Pawn Stars meets Online Sports Collectibles Shop. Cool. We're doing good. We transferred the show, Larry. We changed it up a little bit. I tell you, I like being the trendsetter. There we go. Okay, man. Thank you. Yeah, Thank thanks. you, Willie. Appreciate the call. 3928255, 29 minutes after 5 o'clock here on ESPN 850. RP. Hey, what's going on, guys? You. Hey, I'm not ready to do anything at this point, but we have a ball that, um, I mean, right off the bat, I take, took it pretty seriously because I got it in a globe and it was well taken care of, but it's a Ford Frick baseball. Okay, yeah, Frick. And, um, well, I mean, that was, you know, that's what um, really started the ball as far as taking it serious, but it has an autograph on it. <laughs> and um, the reason why I gave my initials,
visual that my name is Scott. Once I start dealing with it, I'm having a feeling that um, the autograph's going to get some attention. It says, um, sincerely, Abe Ruth. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, that's definitely a piece you want to get authenticated, my friend. Um, you know, Babe Ruth, you said it's signed by Frick and Babe Ruth? No, it just, it just says, sincerely, Babe Ruth, which what I've looked up with on the autograph is there's a, signature, a secretary signature, and that one there is consistent throughout. Mm -hmm. And uh, a Babe Ruth one will have some a little bit of some inconsistency to it to... Um, you know, kind of show that it was a true autograph. And it's an inter the interesting thing about this is uh, Babe and Ford Frick were very close. In fact, because of that is when Ford Frick said there would be two entries in the record book if Roger Maris did not hit 61 before game 154, that both records would be listed going forward. Everyone talks about the asterisk. There never was an asterisk. But uh, the Ruth Frick... Uh, connections well known. Yeah, I mean, and, and that helps, that definitely helps your case. You know, a lot of times, there are a lot, of, I mean, a, people want to make money and you'll find fake items out there all the time, but, you know, I would encourage you to look on, just do a Google image search or check eBay and look at the, you know, the root signatures, and you're right. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's you, what I have, and I've found that it's, it seems to be just enough inconsistency to, you know, um, make it look like it's it's real, so I, mean, I don't know why someone would do it. Hold on a second. Let me see if we can get a kind of a guesstimate on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have a, I mean, today Ruth is probably the most iconic baseball figure outside of maybe, uh, if you have, you know, maybe a Onus Wagner autograph or something very rare. But um, you know, Ruth autograph baseballs, depending on condition, again, everything is based on condition and your certification can range. I, you know, I believe what I've seen for anywhere from five thousand to up to you know. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars, depending on condition, certification, rarity, um, and then the type of signature. Because wow. Ruth, like we said, has um, various uh, uh, different ways he signed things, and that happens all the time. People like LeBron James, for example, he signed everything a certain way. His Cavaliers twenty three was in his, his signature. Changed it when he went to Heat, and who knows what he's going to do now. So um, I think you have something you need to uh, definitely authenticate it, man. Get a uh, do some research online. Uh, PSA. How do you do it privately? I mean, how do you keep it like low key? I mean, um, you know, the angel is a small town. Well, you know. don't you don't do it on the air. Uh, what you do is you contact uh, this James Spence or someone who yeah. does just a sports uh, authentic authentication. Yeah, they're they're Google well it. They will, you'll get some options. Call them, and they may want a photo of it or whatever have you. You may have to take it to somebody yeah. to really get it authenticated so they can look at it. You will. PSA D DNA or, or James Spence back in one of those yeah. three, we'll have to see it. Somebody in person will have to study it. But there'll be a fee to that. But again, that's an investment piece for sure. That sounds like a great piece, man. Oh, all right. Thanks, guys. All right. Have 20 bucks, sight unseen. 20 bucks, yeah. Hey, <laughs> 20 bucks. Sight unseen. <laughs> Could have been signed by his, his uh, gardener. I don't know. Frank, hi. Hey, Steve. Hey, Frank. Larry. Yeah. Steve or Larry. Either Did one you works. change your name to Steve or Larry? There you uh, go. We I have, used to do that. And he should change his to Larry or Steve. I have... Uh, over 100,000 items, signed baseball, bats, cards, pictures, and I've got probably every autograph I want, but I've sold a lot of them, a lot of manuals. Uh, I tell you what, I sold all my T-bows, so I might like a T-bow jersey, but of all the autographs that I would like to have, it would be a Babe Ruth ball, certified. Mm -hmm. Because well, it's worth so much. Well, maybe we can get RP's number and you guys yeah, this talk. Is, Larry's going to make it do a side job we'll here. He's just a broker in deals. Let's make a deal. I get 8%. <laughs> you know, we'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Larry's, uh, Larry's percentage is 10%. Yeah, hey, I, to say about something about Tebow, you know, those pieces are great. You know, I would encourage people, if, if you're ever looking for a Tebow piece, get a Gator uniform piece, you know. Mm -hmm. It's going to carry its value. Uh, Jets or Patriots or even Broncos, unless you have, like, the game used jersey from when he played Pittsburgh or something. But, um, yeah, I mean, those Tebow pieces are nice, and he has a beautiful autograph on those, on those pieces. I sold my last Tebow jersey because the lady was driving me crazy to sell it to her. And so I finally let her have it. I got it. I got it when I was in the hospital, and, and Randy does the guy that, I mean, Larry does the guy that got it for me, Randy, because I was in the hospital, and he went over there and got it signed for me, and uh, brought it to me in the hospital, so I know this will make you feel better. And I had several years, and I had several pictures, mm -hmm. 
And this lady finally bugged me to death. I said, well, I get a no. I'm not worried about it. There you go. That just, never did, that never go did happen. In, just go back in the hospital and one will show up. Yeah, right. Maybe. <laughs> but he, he's not around here too much anymore. Nope. Nope. I've got some mantles and DiMaggio's. And I've got over 200 items listed on eBay right now. Wow. Yeah. And today is the last day of free listing for me for the month. <laughs> this, is so, a, this is a plug-in show. I like it. Order. Okay, we've got dueling, uh, dueling <laughs> sites here. All right, I'm Frank. I'm probably going to put another 50 items on the night. Larry, thank you for bringing him on. All right. And uh, God bless you. All okay, right. but Mealy Pop Shop, Shop, don't forget about Mealy Pop Shop. Uh, Jamil is here to tell us about that. we got to get to our break at the bottom of the hour because I'm already late. If you're on the line, stay there. We'll be right back. You see that car over there? Insured by Geico. The car in front of you, insured by GEICO. The fact is, as I speak, millions and millions of drivers are saving money on their car insurance with GEICO. I was just thinking, why shouldn't one of them be you? You won't get a fisherman to reveal where his favorite fishing hole is, but you can ask any fisherman in North Central Florida where the best stock fishing pro shop is, and they'll all tell you Gary's Tackle Box. In addition to being a full-line tackle shop, Gary's Tackle Box offers fishing rod and reel repair services, as well as difficult-to-find parts for the do-it-yourself rod and reel repair angler. Gary's Tackle Box carries a complete line of factory direct fishing tackle from quality manufacturers like Duckett, Penn, Abu Garcia, St. Croix, and many more. They carry a dazzling selection of lures direct from live target, Lunker Hunt, Yamamoto, Reaction Innovation, Mirror Lure, Fish Bites, and more. You'll need top gear while out on the water, and Gary's Tackle Box is a premium outfitter for Costa sunglasses and Sims all-weather apparel. And if you need some expert advice or just want to shoot the breeze, Gary Simpson and his team of pros invite you to stop by their 5721 Northwest 13th Street location, just a block north of Home Depot next to LNS Auto Trim. Gary's Tackle Box, the folks you fish with. Welcome to Bo's! I'm executive chef for a popular restaurant. Most restaurants are scared to talk about the quality of their food. What? Where do our ingredients come from? Um, good question. But not Moe's. Our food mission is all about giving you 20 plus fresh ingredients, like all natural chicken, grass fed steak, organic tofu, and handmade guac for your burrito, quesadilla, or burrito bowl. Fresh is subjective, uh, I think. Don't, don't, don't you? Swing by Moe's Southwest Grill today for your real, one of a kind meal. 15 minutes could save you 15 minutes or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. I've got something here that's good for you. ESPN 850 WRUF. Call 352-392-TALK. phenomenally well. We're getting emails, we're getting um, phone calls, the lines are all lit up. Again, our Moe's winner today will get a nice little package from Mealy Pop Shop, which is the online business, the online site for Jamil Muhammad and his stuff. And this is great stuff, unbelievable quality. I mean, right off, uh, factory quality cards that have been signed. Uh, this is not stuff that somebody signed in a parking lot or anything like that. Right. It's been authenticated by the big, big name companies, so know that you're getting something legit here. And the package is one of the, one of the new Sweet Spot Signature Series, Brandon Spikes, signed by Spikes. This is a thick card, and then they cut into the card and put in a Gator replica uh, helmet, and that's what he signed. He actually signed the helmet in his Gator uniform, plus an Andrew DeClerc action photo in his Gator uniform, signed by Andrew and Jabbar Gaffney. Um, and Jabbar, Jabbar's is the only one I see that has a number on it. It's uh, number 55 of 200. They, and that's what that is, is like a short print. Yeah, and you'll see that in the card market now. Everything is short printed out of a set, set run, so that's what that means. I've got a print of a painting someone did of the stadium with the last expansion. Oh, wow. And it's, they were like 2,000 of them. It's number five or six of 2,000. Yeah. What does that do? In, in yeah, that's a good question. The low um, number, lower number, the better normally. This is a great question. Uh, the market, uh, up until about five, ten years ago, when cards were serialized or paintings were serialized or things were serialized, people didn't pay much attention to it. But ever since eBay and, and the online front has hit, people, there is a huge craving for the first print run, which is 001 or 1 out of whatever, 
uh, the last of the print run, and then always, and this is the biggest, the jersey number. So if somebody, you know, I brought up LeBron James earlier, 23, if you got 23 out of 100, that card value, if it's a, if it's a signed baseball card or a print, jumps, doubles in value, sometimes triples in value. Um, and it's the first and last of the print run always seem to bring a higher premium. So keep that in mind. If you ever get a jersey number of something on a card and it's that player's jersey number, that adds to it. Definitely. And so number six of 2,000 doesn't add a whole lot to it. I can't it. help you out too much on that no. one, Larry. If it was one, maybe. That, if there was a player number six that... Yeah, and we got him to sign the, the got painting. Got him to sign it? Yeah, that, might, that might do something? Yeah, definitely. Florida hadn't had a great number six. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I, was like, I, I just think of a number six. a number six. I mean, I can find some, but I don't think there's going to be a, a marquee six out there to take me over the top and speed <laughs> up my retirement. Oh, well. 20 minutes before 6 o'clock. Steve, good afternoon. Hey, Larry. Hey. Steve Howard, you tell me this afternoon. I hope you're uh, trying to beat the heat by staying inside as much as possible. Oh, absolutely. No, yeah. if, if the first number is a 9, that, that I, I convert that to German, and that's 9 as in not nine. going out. <laughs> Are you going out today? 9. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I... I know that memorabilia is only worth what you can get to it, but I've always been kind of fascinated with with golf memorabilia, especially some of the older stuff that, that, that they don't even use anymore. But say, what about pictures? What about autographed pictures? If you were to have an 8x10 glossy shot that had, oh, Sam Snead, Ben Hogan, Arnold Palmer, and Byron Nelson on it, how much would that be worth? So give me those names again. You said Palmer, who else? Hogan, Snead. Palmer, Snead, Hogan, and uh, Byron Nelson. That's a good, it's a good little mix there. You, you didn't go on. Yeah, that's a nice sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, the big thing is going to be authentication. So you got to have something authenticated. Yeah, let's assume it is. It's just, if it's authenticated, I mean, and it's an 8x10, um, it's authenticated by a main brand. I think you're looking at a, a good... Um, three to five hundred dollar piece there, you know, with that. You know, eight by tens are depends how the autographs are. You know, if they're smudged or they're overlapping, sometimes that can bring yep. the value down. But if they're clean or they're on each person, um, you probably will get in that. I have to say, probably two hundred four hundred range. I take that back you know, for that piece if it's authenticated and it's done well. Yes. And what about uh, old clubs and putters that you can authenticate that that belong to? Say one of those guys. Yeah, those are. I mean, those are definitely the more rare pieces because anybody can, you know, create so many autographs. But right. the, big, the big trick is how are you going to authenticate it? You know, how do you say that? You know, this is the putter. You know, you know that uh, Palmer used versus uh, this is the putter that's in my garage. So um, I guess you'd have to go talk to the king, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You'd have to have some. Again, that's, some things are challenging in that regard. You know, if it's a bat, yeah. the players' bats are all customized by Louisville Slugger or whoever's producing it. Yeah. And so that makes it a whole lot easier. But with golf clubs, maybe not so much. Although if I was a top golfer and I, whoever made my clubs, I want my name embossed on it because of the and it'll enhance the value long term. And you should definitely check. Sometimes on clubs and, and equipment, they do uh, serialize or they emboss different things or they might even put initials on them. So you never know. You have to really look at the piece and, and kind of investigate a little bit. Steve, you know what would be the most valuable collectible golf club of all? Elon Nordgren's five iron. That would okay. be a valuable golf club, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or uh, how about uh, how about a golf club by uh, the woman Babe Zaharis? No, you know who Elon. You don't know who Elon Nordgren is, do you? No. Okay, no. that's Tiger's wife. <laughs> oh, Tiger's wife. <laughs> right, the five iron she hit on <laughs> the jeep with. You know what I yeah, saw? That would yeah, be a good that club. That would bring some value. There you go. I could tell from his response he didn't know. Got to run, Steve. Thanks a lot for the call. We appreciate it. So, yeah, just another reason why you don't teach your wife to swing a yeah. golf club. What about the uh, guy who lost the master? Uh, when he input his uh, stroke wrong? Uh, who was that guy's name? Uh, oh, the young seven. guy, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Justin, oh, you're talking about way back. Yeah, right? way back, yeah. Oh. I'm thinking about. I can't think of his name, but uh, I wonder what that scorecard. Like, stuff like that is unique, you know. Um, you have somebody who, you know, that piece. That's what lost him the Masters. <laughs> you have them signed by him like that, or you have that piece. That's a one-on-one -on -one thing, you know. That's going to drive price. So if you ever get things like that, or maybe the golf ball that uh, Vander, the the guy who blew the British Open, Vanderveld. Oh yeah, Jean Vanderveld. Vanderveld. Uh, the golf.
softball that he hit in the water twice on 18, costing him a major. I probably don't think he'd sign that. But yeah, I'm just I, guessing. That'd be like uh, asking Jameis to sign a Publix uh, receipt, right? Uh, right. With crab legs on it or something. So. Chris, what's up? Hey, gentlemen. I don't want to take up a whole lot of your time, but I was in a. I would love to have this picture I saw in a museum in Nashville area. Uh, it was. It looked. It was. I'm from kid from the 70s and 80s. And this was Muhammad Ali and Johnny Cash together, and like it looked like a casino. So the picture must have been taken in Vegas. I'm assuming. And they both had like their dukes up at each other, like they were just clowning <laughs> around. I was yeah, just uh, Ali was took a lot of Ali took a lot of pictures like that with other celebrities over the years. But and it was it, just a cool both signed by both guys. And I just thought you know two guys from totally different realms of popularity. It was just a cool picture. I'd love to have it in my house. That was awesome. Okay, uh, so you don't have it, but you saw it. Oh, I saw it in the museum. I thought it was awesome. Me and Larry can sign it if you want to find the picture. That's and right. We can authenticate. I know how to spell Ali. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thank All you. right, Chris, appreciate that. A photo with guys from totally different worlds that are big in their respective world, but boxing fans may not be country music fans right. and vice versa. How is it to gauge the value of something? I would probably say, depending on the circumstance, you know, it's probably going to drive it down a little bit. You know, you want uh, association. You want people people who buy pieces. It'd be better off having the cash signature by himself or the Ali by himself. You know, I think there's probably more of a personal touch to that if you were there and you saw them doing that or you took the photo. But um, Ali's an interesting piece too to study. His autograph has changed, you know, tremendously over the years because of Parkinson's. And so um, you look at his and, and his autographs today are barely legible. Does he still sign things? He does. You know, but it's 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 um it's sad. You know, you look yeah. at it and it's it's really. It's, it's even hard to make out what he's doing. So that sort of dramatically changes the value from when he was in his prime, yeah. and, and everybody could, uh, people couldn't fall over themselves enough to get signed right. gloves or whatever. Or Cassius Clay, he signed a lot of things like Cassius Clay, and that's a lot more rare than you'd find a mom and Ali autograph. Did he ever sign those after he changed his name? Um, I don't know. I, I've never seen a piece like that. I've seen a lot of Cassius Clay. I have one um, really? that I got get authenticated, but um, uh, yeah, you, you haven't seen a lot of those where he's signed after the fact. All right, let's take one more call, then we got to get to a break. We could do two more hours, but they won't let us, so... Little Sully, what's up? Well, hey, uh, I'd like to have a Lance Swan autograph, and I've got a helmet that I bought at an antique mall with Terry Bradshaw and Buckle Harris on it, but she took it off and put it on it, find out how much it might cost. Okay, so it's... Uh, who signed it? It's... Uh, who talked to... Buckle Harris. Franco Harris and... Bradshaw. Bradshaw signed what? Um, full size helmet. A full Bradshaw. size. All right, a full size Steeler helmet. Yes, sir. Signed by Franco and. Yeah, something like that. You know, wow. you know, if you get something authenticated, that's done by them. I mean, obviously, that's you know, you talk about Steeler history. That's prime piece. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he's gonna be looking. You're gonna be looking in the 500, you know, 750 range for those two with, with something that's authenticated well by them. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I only paid a hundred dollars for it. The lady said that she didn't know if it was real or not. Then I looked on the bottom of the thing that the helmet was in, it had a certificate under it. There you go, and, and and I'll say this really quickly too. Uh, authenticity uh, is very it's it's important to understand who you're getting things authenticated by because there are a lot of companies out there who it's a one man shop in his garage and he prints up a, a fancy label. So I always say consider that when you're if you're buying a piece, I, I say make sure you get an authentic authentication with it, some sort of um, letter or or even they sometimes have these little pamphlet type things. But make sure it's also done from a, a, a good source. You don't want you know, Joe's autograph, you know, club and collectible saying he, he authentic, authenticized something for you. So, um, but that's a great find. Yes, sir. It's a great find. I've been a Steelers fan all my life. My aunt was a Dallas Cowboy fan. That's why I was rooting for the Steelers. <laughs> gotcha. All, all right, right man. man. Thanks for the call. Thanks. All right. Now, if you, now, what would be worth more? A Steeler helmet signed by Franco Harris and Terry Bradshaw or a Cowboy helmet signed by Roger Staubach? And who would, it be? who would we get? Lance Rensel? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Walt Garrison. He's, he's trying to draw lines there. Alvin that's, Hill. There you that's, go. That's fighting words right there with, with fans, isn't it? Well, no I mean, it, who's, who's worth more? Uh, Cowboy Steelers by far. 49ers up there as well. Um, most popular teams in the NFL. So those are some, be some nice things. we got to get to a break. When we come back, we're not going to get to a summer champions question. It's best been too hectic, so tomorrow will be wild. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun for us. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about a, a piece that I've got on a shelf that would be worth a lot more in a different state.
You've wanted one for as long as you remember. A car that makes a statement and turns some heads. The car that has people saying, sweet ride. A Lexus, Mercedes, Audi, Infiniti, a Beamer. But you've never quite been able to afford one. Well, now you can at Motor Seller in Gainesville. They specialize in quality late model pre-owned cars that are meticulously serviced by their expert team. Every vehicle is made to look, feel, and perform like new again. Maybe you want a basic gas saver. A fully loaded luxury vehicle or something in between. Motor Seller has the car you want at the price you can afford. And they offer financing to help put you in the driver's seat. Don't just dream about what could be. Make it happen today at Motor Seller of Gainesville. 2120 North Main Street. Find your dream car that's affordable for you at Motor Seller of Gainesville, where car dreams can come true. Check MotorSeller.net or Facebook Motor Seller Used Cars. Call 352-505-4188. Are you ready to get wet? Are you ready to go wild? Then pack up the kids and get to Wild Waters, located at Silver Spring State Park. Phase 1 of the water park is open. The Silver Bullet, Bunyan's Bend, Osceola's Revenge, and the Mini Monster. Bring the whole family and get cool in the wave pool. Romp with the kids in the children's play area or test your courage out on the alligator ambush slide. Why not treat the kids to a back-to-school party or birthday bash at Wild Waters? Different party packages available, complete with food, drinks, and admission tickets in a reserved area. All you do is supply the kids. The cost of admission to Wild Waters is only $10 for adults and $5 for kids 11 and under. Wild Waters is open Monday through Thursday from 10 to 6. For more information, call 352-877-2267. Come on and get wild. Wild Waters Silver Spring State Park. Highway 40. Check us out on Facebook. Brought to you by Gainesville Harley-Davidson. Celebrating 21 years strong. Now I hear it. Now I hear this. We are here. We know you've got something to say. Give us a buzz. 352-392-TALK. ESPN 850 WRUF. Pop shop, you'll see all the stuff they've got. Do you have non-sports stuff, or is you are you all sports? I do. I, I like to focus on sports because I know it well. But I got mm -hmm. everything. Uh, like I told you, I have, uh, different collections all the time that I obtain, and I get them certified. So you, you can find anything there, and I'll be always adding more. And you can always get in touch with me. Uh, my email is actually mealypops at yahoo.com, so you can, okay. you can reach me that way easily. And, uh, we can go from there if you're looking for a piece. Christmas season's coming up, right, right. Larry? What's the strange, the, the most unique thing, non-sports? <laughs> I got something cool. I was thinking about this. I was driving over. Uh, last year, I had a um, car. It was authenticated through Tops. It was Allen & Ginter, their big brand. And they had a one-of-one, one, which would mean it was the only car to release from their set. And it was a hair strand of Richard Nixon um, embedded in a car. And, um, yeah, it was a I very, very interesting piece. Uh, my wife and I looked at it, and we were a little unsure about it, unsettled, because we had... Uh, dead president's hair in our wow. possession, but um, yeah, people collect. Does it that have action. a little caption? I am not a lock. Of yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> inscription that would have been good. I'm not a lock of hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, you need to look over the answers before we wrap up and pick one. Take your time, and we'll take another call or two in our final segment. We've got about five minutes to go. Um, next up, we've got Jonesy. Hey, Larry, I just wanted to know about this. Should I have from Dale Earnhardt Jr., you said it was only $2. <laughs> it was signed by Dale, and I was just wondering how much you think that would be worth. What kind of shirt? It's a long sleeve Budweiser shirt when you used to drive for Budweiser back in 2002. I had won a um, okay, contest. But, but it's from Junior? It's from Junior. Dale Earnhardt Jr. shirt with the Budweiser logo? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a nice piece. There are some there's diehard Junior fans. Um, autograph again, if it's just in person and, and you don't have any authentication with it, you're probably only going to be able to get about... 50 bucks for it. But again, if you have authentication, you know, or if you were to put in a piece of frame or something like that, I mean, it could be a, you know, a $300 type 
type deal. But the I'm best deal you'll get for it, I'll, I'll tell you right now, the heck with the authentication stuff. <laughs> all right? The best deal you will get, seriously, the best deal you will get for this is to show up at a racetrack with it folded beautifully with the signature obvious and visible. There will be so many people at that race who have authenticated Dale Earnhardt Jr. signatures, there will be no problem finding Bubba with a couple of a couple of 50s in his pocket. Maybe three Great. or four of them. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Great. Um, the contest, I would say I would take that last ball that was by uh, Lou Gatt and put it into the contest they have now for the ALS disease. Mm -hmm. And whoever gives me the, uh, the most for it, we'll get to all that disease uh, co uh, contest. Because uh, if you ever met anybody who had that disease, you know why. I have and I do, and thank you. I appreciate that. And if you do, if you get that and you do that donation, I will let you pour a bucket of ice water on my head. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We got a deal. Before we to break, talk about something on my shelf. Uh, shortly after Kentucky won the national championship in basketball in '96, Rick Pitino, who's known as someone who was kind of reluctant to sign stuff, signed several basketballs for donation to the boys and girls clubs, and I bid on one and, and got one at an auction. So this is a commemorative ball, clearly for that national championship tournament, signed by Rick Pitino, the coach of the national championship team. Is yeah. there value there? Great piece. Larry, Larry, he belongs on the Antique Road Show with this, and having a guy in a British accent tell him how rare this is. Hello. Um, hello. Um, the, uh, the Pitino ball is great, great piece because he doesn't sign many basketballs, number one. Um, two, he doesn't sign many autographs in general. And then this is a commemorative um, Kentucky basketball, it sounds like. So... You have something there that can be easily authenticated. Um, his, his autograph is not going to be fake. It's going it to be given to the Boys and Girls Club. Um, and then again, if you find the right buyer in, in, in Lexington or um, you know somewhere in the state of Kentucky, I'm sure somebody will pay uh, upwards of thousand fifteen hundred dollars or something like that, just because of the rarity of Patino, the legend of Patino, you know. Um, but it, to give you an example, with Spurrier, you know, Spurrier signed a lot of stuff, you right. know, so he was, people buy Spurrier all the time in Gainesville, but he just signed everything, right. and so, um, that's, that's and a nice piece. value has, Tebow, someone asked about that, that's, that's probably peaked, hasn't it? Yeah, it peaked, actually, he's, he's, he's rollercoasted a lot, because mm -hmm. initially, and then he went down, and then, and then, then the Pittsburgh game, and then after that with the Jets, so, he's, he's been all over the place, and now he's on the SEC Network, I think it's leveled off, his autographs, his rookie cards have kind of leveled off, um. I don't see them going much higher unless he gets back in the NFL, which who did, you never know, Larry. Let's sneak one last call in. Sorry, we're running out of time, folks. Jason, you got about a minute. Hey, uh, I got a card. I think it's from around 1927. It was my uncle's uh, ticket when he was in high school, and then they would give you like a six-game ticket that you would hole punch, and it was from the game that set the uh, high school state record, 256 to nothing, uh, Haven, Kansas, and I don't remember what the other team was, but is there any value on that? Um, with uh, my uncle wrote all of the um, information on it from the game and, and uh, stuff like that. Would that hold any value? I think so. I mean, that's that's the game that that's the highest scoring uh, deficit in, in terms of a blowout game in high school sports. So right. um, you definitely have something there. Uh, there's no autographs or anything on it, right? No, no autographs. Just his writing on it, saying when it happened, and that they beat him by 256, and it was a you know, a thin record at the time, and I mean, this was like 1927. It was my great uncle, so. Yeah, no, that's definitely something that you'd want to want to try and get authenticated. I think you would definitely have some value in that. Um, again, okay. searching that stuff up, there'll be a fee for it. But again, once you get stuff authenticated, people know it's legit, and once it's legit, you have a uh, a great opportunity to sell that. So, and there are definitely collectors who would want that because that is a piece from something in history. So. Yeah, I appreciate you being on. I really appreciate it. All right. All right. We will definitely do this again. This was a who Ryan emailed in. I don't know if we can get an answer on this quickly enough, but he has a shadow box uh, created by Terry Labonte's fan club that Terry signed for the year he won the Winston Cup championship in 1996. Yeah, that looks cool. Uh, I'm reading it. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, the uh, you know, Value-wise on that might be a little tough uh, because... Labonte stuff has definitely gone down over the years. Uh, outside for NASCAR collectors, outside of Earnhardt, um, you really you're having a hard time getting what you well, want. Even stuff. Johnson and Gordon. Yeah, Johnson Gordon. Gordon stuff. I think is he's starting to level off a little bit, getting a little better. Um, again, Tony Stewart stuff is has, has recently taken yeah, a huge hit. That's really on sale, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It's clearance clearance out. But um, I think it has some value there. I think it sounds like a cool thing. Larry brought up a good point. You find the right audience. You take it to a race. You take it to 
a collector's convention, you'll find the right person to, to pick that up. Um, I, I don't really know what it, it looks like. I'd have to kind of see it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm assuming uh, high five, one of the yeah, so you have the racing boots in there as well. So you have game used, you have race used items. Yeah. So you're looking at you know definitely in the hundreds. Um, I wouldn't say probably more than four or five hundred if it's authenticated and, and, and has some paperwork. Jamil, this was a hoot. Yeah, man, had a hoot. great time. We appreciate you bringing stuff. We will give away some more of his stuff. We're going to do another one. Uh, maybe near the start of basketball season. He has some unbelievable Gator basketball stuff. We'll give you a chance to win as well. Don't forget, you can email him at um, mealypops at yahoo.com. Or if you want to check out his site, it's Mealy Pops Shop. That's M-E-E-L-Y Pops Shop. Check it out and get some cool stuff, and we'll do it again. Thanks for coming in. No problem. Thanks for having me on. That was a fun show, a crazy show. I'm going to go catch my breath. <laughs>